writing methodology, you all, can actually be a pleasant and easy journey. What? You crazy? No, seriously. I mean, seriously, in all honesty, writing the methodology section can be the easiest section that you will ever write for your paper or your thesis. How? Well, stick around for today's video because I'm going to show you all the elements that you will need to include in a methodology section so that you have a whole template that you can basically take and use it to write your paper or thesis more quickly and also more accurately. So let's dive into it. If you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowiak and I run Academic English Now, where I help university students and researchers write better theses and papers. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell button so we can continue learning academic writing together here on this channel. Now, in one of my previous videos, I walked you through the three essential elements that every methodology section in every field will need to have. In this video, I want to go into a little bit more details and also talk about the other additional sections that you might need to include in certain fields or perhaps when you're writing a thesis rather than an academic paper. If you're interested in those three essential elements, then the link is right below this video. In here, I'll mention them, but I won't go into much detail about them. Now, at the very start of your methodology section, what you might need to do is talk about the background and the setting for your study. This is especially important if you're in social sciences and you're doing any kind of ethnographic study. There you will really have to present where the study took place. But this can be relevant for other fields. For example, if you're doing something on water management, you might also need to really in a lot of detail present the region where your study took place. So that would be the element number one. Element number two, that's especially typical if you're writing a thesis where you will have more space for the methodology section, but I personally really, really like to use it and almost always include it as one of the first sentences in my methodology section of a paper. And in here, I'm talking about defining the methodology that you used and justifying why you used it. Especially if you're doing a methodology that is less well known in your field, then you might need to define it and then justify why you used it. But I personally have grown into a habit where I use it in almost every paper that I write. And I'll typically say something like, this study was conducted using a mixed methods approach, which can be defined as, and then I define it. And then sometimes I'll give a justification why I decided to use this approach as well. So that's the element number two. Now, element number three, and that's one of the essential elements that you definitely need to include, you can't miss out on it, it's the materials or the sample and sampling technique. As I said, I've got another video where I go into much more detail about it, but in here, suffice it to say that it refers basically to the thing or the people that you studied in your research and how you chose them. Sorry to interrupt, but I just wanted to remind you to hit that subscribe and that bell button so we can continue learning academic writing together on this channel. If you're doing something on human subjects, now another element that you will need to include here is ethical considerations. As a reviewer in peer-reviewed journals, this is really one of the boxes that a study has to tick for it to be successful. In other words, you need to mention the ethical considerations that you took into account when conducting your study on human subjects especially. So, for example, one of the really, really important things here is that the subjects remain anonymous and that you've informed them about the purpose of your study. Once you've done that, you need to dive in to the research tools and walk us through the procedures of your study. Again, I explained that a lot in another video that I did on the methodology section and the link is right below here. And Finally, once you've done that, then you need to tell us how you analyzed your data. Don't give us the results just yet, but 
explain to us what statistical models you used or what statistical procedures you used to analyze your data or what qualitative approach to data analysis you use. If you're not sure which one is the right for um, your data, then there will be handbooks on data analysis techniques for each different discipline that you can use to check. If you enjoy this video, but you want to learn more, not only about how to write your methodology, but also how to write the rest of your thesis or paper, then definitely check out my academic writing mastery program, where I walk you through step by step on practical real life examples, how to write a thesis or paper in any discipline. And the link is right below this video.